Good day, eh? Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I decided someone had told me that I should read a book. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So today we will be reading a book. I will link in the description below where you can download this copy, share it, follow along. This book is The Ugly Duckling. It's a mini book. It's a condensed version based on the original story by Hans Christian Andersen. It's illustrated by the person on the screen here. I can't say the name. I am sorry. We are going to read this book and we are going to start right now. So if this is your first time, welcome. This is my first time. So, hey, I'm glad to meet you and we will read this book. In the snug retreat sat a duck on her eggs. She was beginning to get tired of her task, for she seldom had any visitors. The other ducks liked much better to swim about in the river. At length, one shell cracked, and then another, and from each egg came a living creature that lifted its head and cried, Peep, peep. Are you all out? she asked, rising. No, I declared, the largest egg lies there still, and she seated herself again on the nest. I think I will sit on a little while longer, said the duck, as I have sat so long already, a few days will be nothing. At last the large egg broke, and a young one crept forth crying, peep, peep. It was very large and ugly. The duck stared at it and exclaimed, It is very large and not at all like the others, but how well he uses his legs and how upright he holds himself. He is my own child, and he is not very ugly after all if you look at him properly. Quack, quack. Come with me, now. I will take you into the grand society and introduce you to the farmyard. When they reached the spot and made themselves comfortable, but the poor duckling, who had crept out of his shell, last of all, and looked so ugly, was bitten and pushed and made fun of, not only by the ducks, but by all the poultry. He is too big, they all said. The poor duckling was driven about by everyone. The ducks pecked him, the chickens beat him, and the girl who fed the poultry kicked him with her feet. So at last he ran away, frightening the little birds in the hedge as he flew over the palings. He closed his eyes and flew still farther until he came out on a large moor inhabited by wild ducks. Pop, pop, guns sounded in the air, and the whole flock of wild geese rose up from the rushes. The sound continued from every direction, for the sportsmen surrounded the moor overlooking the rushes. How they terrified the poor duckling. He turned away his head to hide it under his wing, and at the same moment a large terrible dog passed quite near him. He thrust his nose close to the duckling, showing his sharp teeth, and then splash, splash, he went into the water without touching him. Oh, sighed the duckling, how thankful I am for being so ugly. Even a dog will not bite me. The poor young thing waited quietly for several hours. And then, after looking carefully around him, hasted away from the moor as fast as he could. He ran over field and meadow till a storm arose, and he could hardly struggle against it. And after a while, he could go no further, sat down by the cottage. And then he noticed that the door was not quite closed. There was therefore a narrow opening near the bottom large enough for him to slip through, which he did very quietly. A woman, a tomcat, and a hen 
lived in this cottage. The tomcat began to purr, and the hen to cluck. Oh, what a prize, said the old woman. I hope it's not a drake, for then I shall have some duck's eggs. I must wait and see. Can you lay eggs, she asked. No. Can you raise your back or purr or throw out sparks, said the tomcat. I believe I must go out into the world again, said the duckling. Yes, do, said the hen. For the duckling left the cottage and soon found water on which it could swim and dive, but was avoided by all other animals because of its ugly appearance. It would be very sad were I to relate all the misery and privations which the poor little duckling endured during the hard winter. But when it had passed, he found himself lying one morning in a moor. Against the rushes, he felt the warm sun shining, and heard the lark singing, and saw that all around was beautiful spring. Then the young bird felt that his wings were strong, as he flapped them against his sides, and rose high into the air. They bore him onwards until he found himself in a large garden from a thicket close by. Came three beautiful white swans rustling their feathers and swimming lightly over the smooth water. The duckling remembered the lovely birds and felt more strangely unhappy than ever. I will fly to those royal birds, he exclaimed and they will kill me because I am so ugly, and dare to approach them. But it does not matter. Better be killed by them than pecked by the ducks, beaten by the hens, pushed about by the maiden who feeds the poultry, or starved in the winter. The moment they espied the stranger, they rushed to meet him with outstretched wings. Kill me, said the poor bird and he bent his head down to the surface of the water and awaited death. But what he did not see in the clear stream below, his own image, no longer a dark gray bird, ugly and disagreeable to look at, but a graceful and beautiful swan. To be born in a duck's nest in a farmyard is of no consequence to a bird if it is hatched from a swan's egg. Now he felt glad at having suffered sorrow and trouble because it enabled him to enjoy so much better all the pleasure and happiness around him. For the great swan swam around the newcomer and stroked his neck with their beaks as a welcome. He cried joyfully from the depth of his heart. I never dreamed of such happiness as this. Well, I was an ugly duckling, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a first attempt. I was told to do it, so I did it. I will get this edited, put up, and hopefully someone will enjoy it. Thank you. Have a wonderful night and take care, eh?